This is BBC Two. Now a screen two, and the first part of the film starring Pauline Collins and Derek O'Connor in the true and unusual love story, Knockback. convicted of the murder of Thomas Clark. I pass the sentence that the law provides. You will go to prison for the rest of your life. Your Lordship, as you are aware, this is the first occasion that a man has been found guilty of murder since the abolition of the death sentence. For the first time in the history of the courts, a man has been found guilty of a capital offence without being in jeopardy of being sentenced to be hanged. I ask you not to make a recommendation under the new act. The murder you've been found guilty of was carefully planned and ruthlessly executed. I conceive it to be my duty to make a recommendation, which Parliament has authorised me to make, and declare that the minimum, that the period, minimum you period you must serve is 15 years. Full name, age, and what sentence you're serving? Ackland, 25, life. Whenever you speak to a prison officer, you'll say, sir. Have you got that? Yeah, sir. Colour of eyes? Brown, sir. Any scars? No, sir. Religion? Buddhist, sir. Don't be clever, Acklin. We've got the answer to clever bastards like you. In this nick, you can be C of E, R, C or Jew. Take your pick. Right, here. Yeah. No talking! Good dress, lad. You ain't here for a fitting.
Show my good faith, I brought you a little sweet for the aggravation. Ackland, the Home Office has decided you are both dangerous and an escape risk. You have been classified E and must wear clothes with patches. Every movement you make here will be timed, dated and recorded in your e-book. Your clothes will be taken away at night. There will be an officer outside your door and another outside your window 24 hours a day. You'll have no verbal communication with any person except within sight or sound of an officer. This applies to your legal representative and members of your family, including your wife. Whenever you are unlocked, there will be at least three officers present. It is my responsibility, Ackland, to consider the well-being, morale, and safety of my staff. After all, you have nothing to lose by a repetition of your crime. These conditions will apply until the Home Office decides what to do with you. You watching Taylor in here? Look at it. I've got two of these things following me around all day. Anywhere I go, even a bloody car's in. They've got no right to make a special case out of me. I'm not breaking any rules. What am I doing down the punishment block, and why am I in solitary? And I'd like to help you out. Leave me halfway up Ship Creek without a paddle, and you tell me there's nothing you can there do about it. There is nothing I can do about it. Well, I am not going to stand for it, I'll tell you that. I did what I did, and I got life for it, and that's fair enough. Life does not mean the treatment that I'm getting. Just because I'm the first, isn't it? They don't know what to do with me, do they? Keep you on a bloody ball and chain if they had their way. The judge said nothing about 15 years in solitary. Your classification is a matter for the prison authorities, not the courts. Do you bring me what I asked you for? Yes. Well, get it out. One copy of Her Majesty's prison's rules and regulations. I have permission, officer. You've got to ask that prat for permission to give me something that's already my rights. My rights are that I do my bird under the same conditions as any other prisoner doing an equivalent sentence. Now, if it says in here that I should be down a punishment block, I'll shut up. If it doesn't, there's going to be trouble. Where we can see you, Ackland. Is that him up? No. Where's him up? Well, he's, he's a good girl.
working for the council, are we now? Oh, God. I always said you should play Mother Courage. Trust you. I'd rather expected you to be your typewriter bashing out a new masterpiece. Don't mock me. I'm not up to it. No mockery intended. It's good to see you, girl. Come in. You were a good actress. You once said I didn't have the spark. Are you doing any writing? Nope. I said that, as far as I can remember, because you constantly saying that acting was a childish way to earn a living. Finally, it made me very angry. Because I threw doubts on your maturity. Perhaps. On the other hand, it might have been your way of claiming superiority. What does that mean? Well, I was a success. Why have you come to see me? I've been wondering how you were. How I am? Well... Considering I've been through some sort of breakdown, I think I'm fine. Why didn't you let me know? I haven't changed my phone number. You ended our relationship. It was all such a mess. Let's not drag all that up again. Look, I'm in town for eight weeks. It's not on, Johnny. I'm sure you can find a better way of spending your days off. I'm sorry. It's me. Do you see Harry? From time to time. He comes to see the children occasionally. How is he? The same. No worse, no better. And your family? I haven't seen much of them since the divorce. Ah, oh, they blame you. Because of me. Because I had a lover. Yes. And we were lovers. more than just that, you know. Yes. But you had, and still have, a wife. Perhaps that was the attraction. Hello. You found us all right, then? Yes. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. Not to worry, dear. I'm Phil Strode. Uh, this is Mary Wood, our oh, administrator. Hello, Sylvia. And this is Jonathan Lee. How do you hello, do? Sylvia. How are you? I, I don't believe in altruism. I think that people do things because they want to, because there's something in it for them. Uh, I'm sorry. That sounds very rude. Hmm. There's a lot of truth in that. What do you think you'll get out of visiting prisoners? Well, I, I've been very concentrated on myself lately. Rather the centre of my own world. I'd like to shift the balance. What do you look for in a voluntary associate? 
The ability to listen is very important. You have to care, but at the same time, you need a healthy dose of cynicism. It's not that cons lie, it's just that the truth gets embellished. Most of them have nothing else to think about but themselves and their situation. That I do understand. Should we accept you? You'll have to attend a preparation course run by NACRO. Sorry, that's the National Association for the Care and Resettlement of Offenders. There's the most enormous reading list. Then you'll be assessed by Board of Probation Officers. How do you feel about all that? I'm a great reader. I was in the district. Of course. You should call the council. They have a service for such items. I'm having a clear out. Want some coffee? Coffee's bad for you at my age. You been to work? No, I haven't got a job. How's father? Just the same. He says he's going bankrupt again. I don't pay attention. Three times we've had to sell our home. What's once more? You haven't been to see me. I didn't think I was welcome. I haven't come here to quarrel. Why have you come? I told you I was in the district. I've been visiting with Maureen Galili. You remember Maureen? Yes, I think so. Her Sydney's not been too well. If you have no job, how are you managing? With difficulty. You see why we don't meet. I make an inquiry out of concern and you bite my head off. You want some tea, Mama? I think I've got a lemon. You're looking better than you did last time I saw you. That was a long time ago. I am better. You're still reading as much as ever? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing a sort of course. For a qualification, perhaps? Actually, I'm studying to visit men in prison. Nothing you do will surprise me. George Burns. You don't look like George Burns to me. I'm a vol... a, a voluntary associate. You better come in. What's your rooms over there? Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Sylvia Barker for George Burns. Wait rooms in there. Three five seven six four B one three five seven six four. Oh, yes. A one three eight four seven one. 
Down here, Mrs. It's very decent of you. Have you got a fag? No, I don't smoke. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to bring you some books. Uh, but I, I'm not sure what they allow in here. I don't know what to say. I ain't never had a visitor before. Well, my mum, she sometimes comes. It's my first time, too. What, you ain't never been inside a prison before? No. <laughs> Flippin' heck. Uh... Get your clothes off, son. It's all right you're not going to the gas chambers. Where am I? A Magistrate's Prison's new pride and joy. Category A, Special Security Wing. And it's as tight as a duck's ass. You've joined the elite, lad. Only the most dangerous fellows get in here. Oh, yeah, that includes you, does it? There's 15 of you and there's 15 of us. 24 hours a day. We live in each other's pockets. So a bit of civility has to be the order of the day. Nobody shouts here. And cheeking me, or any other officer, well, it isn't really fruitful. They're all hard men here, and we all know it. Bloody thing's fit. Savile Row, son. If the taxpayers only knew. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? Hello, Pete. How are you, mate? Wait, shall I? Get a chip. Come over here. He knows our train robber then. Yeah.
figured out how many times you've been spun at it. Well, I reckon over five years average, five times a day. That's six and a half thousand bloody times. Well, ask me how many times I have to do it. Ah, uh, you take pleasure in it, my son. Hey, do it a bit, but while you're down there, will you? Down to dogs. Five different languages. What do you mean they wouldn't let you bring it in? They said I didn't have permission no more. The governor gave permission. I got permission for her to bring in a chip hat. I want to see the governor. Take it easy now, dogs. Your man's on leave. Just sit down now. Oh, it's that bastard of a DG, isn't it? That's enough now, dogs. I brought it, but they wouldn't let me bring it in. The governor gave me permission to have a chip hat. And no pig of a devil is going to screw me out of it. Right, that's it, dogs. Listen to What am I going to do now? Hours it took me to get here. You go on three here, love. Come on, I have permission. Okay. Hey, carry on, What's that man shouting, Dad? Take it out. Come on, son. Come with your grandma. All right, if I go out, sir. All right then, sir. Would you like a cup of tea then? That would be very kind. Just so, dear. Yeah. I don't know anything about you anymore. I saw an article in the paper that said you had life of luxury in here. I work my strings in here. Can't see them, can it? It's clever, isn't it? to yourself, but now you're hard, and that's different. Alan, tell me what you're thinking. Say 
say something to me. I'm defining my limitations. Limits. I shouldn't be in here, huh? That's what they all say, mate. yourself to yourself, will you? Look, you've got more space than anybody else. What's that leaking? I know some sort of a play frame for the kids on the estate. I'm doing good. Got enough timber there to build the ark. My present status than any DG or AG. Sucks you on the lad to vote, doesn't it? Yeah, but I'll never make governor anyway. I take a drop in salary just to wear a suit. Uh, no, I don't believe it. Dobbs has finally finished his carpet. It ain't going to go, is it? It just ain't going to bloody go. Well, what do you want to put it in a poxy box for anyway? Monsters took me. 
I don't want some burke on the railways ripping it, do I? Fold it, don't roll oh, it. Oh, I tried bloody folding it, didn't I? Yeah, let me have a go with oh, it. Oh, leave off. Get the chest off. Just throw a wrap paper around it. Wrap it around his dick more like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put string around it. I don't want to hey, roll it. Hey, that's it. Bring it up, my lad. It's back to the side. Hey, give me back. Hey, give me back the carpet, Alan. What are you doing? Hey, Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> what are you doing? Ali Barber, Dobsy, I'm going to get on your foxy carpet and I'm going to piss off out of it! Yeah! Yeah! I'm coming with you! Are you trying to get nutted off? Can't do it, Pete. Can't stand it, my mama. Crap, you know. I can't stand the Christophobia! You're hungry, Alan. You haven't eaten for two days. You're telling me you're on hunger strike? Now, come on, Alan. You'll have to pull yourself together. Thank you. 
Your progress is good. For tomorrow, we'll increase your food intake. You still haven't answered my question. You were put into the straitjacket because of a bureaucratic mistake. Your Category A status and the report from Parkers led people to believe that you were potentially dangerous. And they all go there, you know. Experts find dignitaries to go to visit the animals in the zoo. Jolly good, they say. Well done, they say. Just like the Hilton, they say. And they piss off really pleased with themselves. <laughs> the Home Secretary went there one day. I said to him, what am I doing here? He said, you are here because you're here because you're here because you're here. But I wasn't here. I was there. That place. Screw's always watching you. Eyes right inside your head. Knows exactly what you are thinking. Which is piss off, you stupid bastard, and leave me alone. But they don't do that. They keep watching, making notes, passing pieces of paper. That's where to get out, you see. That place was built for some of the most violent men in the country. So what's that make me, Al Capone? Who says I'm one of the most violent men in the country? I'm going to be all right. Yes. If you grasp what you've been through. Yeah, that's the recommendation, you see. I've got to serve 15 years. No remission, no parole. Piece of paper here, piece of paper there. Some twat in the home office gives it to another twat in the prison service. That's me, just a bloody great pile of paper. Eklund. It's my view that at Parkhurst you experienced a minor breakdown. You're not over it yet. How do you know what happened to me there? Uh, more pieces of paper. I've studied your reports, yes. Well, if they knew I was going around a twist, why didn't they get me out? We have a chance now. But first we have to get you well physically. Then we can work on your mental energy. I've got another 12 years to do. I am not going back into that place. We'll keep you here for a while. Well, that's not up to you. That's not your decision, is it? There's some little twat in the home office. He's got a button, Mark Ackland. He's the one who controls my life. Look, there you go. He just pressed it. See that? So, Mrs. Ackland, in view of the circumstances and your husband's agreement, this court grants you a decree nicer. Amicus is not in the business of reform. Why not? It's just not our brief. Also, to some extent, we have to cooperate and coexist with the authorities. Oh, the classic middle-class compromise. If you want change, then stand for the executive. I suppose we are predominantly a middle-class organization. Yes, dealing with a predominantly working-class population. What's Gartree like, anyway? The most modern and the most secure prison in England. It gives me the willies. They've been quite clever environmentally. The prison's built in a great hole in the ground behind that wall. You see those video cameras up on the poles? Yes. They're all over. They monitor every movement inside and outside the prison. Down to the door, please, and we'll let you in. Thank you. Thank you. My God, a civil screw. Straight on. Two visitors, gate seven. Okay, let him in. create this and keep those pigsties at Wandsworth in the scrubs. Shut up, Sylvia. 
Listen, we're both seeing new clients. We've no idea what they're like. Visits here can be up to two hours. If either of us has had enough, we signal the other to come and get us out of it. OK? Smoke signals? I'm completely serious. You pull the lobe of your ear, like this, and I rescue you. I do the same, and you come and get me out of it. All right? The classical myths are only applicable in as much as the are for myths. Stories like this. Yes, but Arthur, I'm taking a different starting point. Well, your starting point is the fact that you can't get over the fact that you're talking to a bank robber on a matter such as this. And that gets in the way of your objective thinking. You're absolutely right. It's blokes like you that are responsible for me being in here. I agreed to have a visitor because I reckoned you might see things from my side. That's the point. But you're just like all the rest. I was a chronic school refuser, and they sent me a bloody headmaster. The religion of the Greeks is dead, forgotten. But the legend's great. I mean, say uh, Jason. Sure, Hollywood, really. He's just a very interesting man. He's done two courses with the Open University. He's intelligent, perceptive, with a completely original approach. It's his brain you're interested in? Oh, don't be daft, Jenny. Well, isn't that just the teeniest tingle when you think of him crashing into a bank with a stocking mask over his head? Come on, Jenny. Oh, criminals have a perennial fascination for the rest of us. Look at literature. Dostoevsky, Agatha Christie, and spy stories. All those agent heroes, they're only licensed criminals. What's fascinating about Arthur is his discovery of his own intellectual possibilities under such circumstances. A flower in a dunghill, eh? A flowering in a dunghill. Do you know, I've discovered a whole pile of prejudices within myself which are almost subconscious. Every law-abiding person wants to see the offender locked up and then forget about them. But being a VA, I can no longer do that. Oh, just a sec. Did you know? Did you know that the British public will accept the fact that prisoners watch television, but only if it's in black and white? If a governor allows colour sets, there's a public outcry. I found this quote in the listener the other day I thought would interest you. The first principle is to see the guilty as men, which they were before they were guilty, and will be when they're no longer so, and which they are in the midst of it all. Their humanity is the principal thing about them. Their guilt is a temporary state. Dear Sylvia, Knowing your interest in Arthur O'Callaghan, I feel it is my duty as his probation officer to tell you what is happening here. For some reason, the other inmates have decided he's an informer and he's had to go on Rule 43 for his own protection. I'm afraid the disgrace and the strain of solitary confinement are taking their toll of him. He's applied for a transfer to another prison. We'll have the answer soon, but can you please come and talk to him? Sylvia. Ian, any news? Yes. And it's not good. They've turned down his transfer. It's hit him pretty hard. But he's desperate. Why, Ian? Can't you do anything? I've done everything I can. He's not an informer. The cons believe he is. They've tried him. They've sentenced him. He won't be satisfied until they've carried out their own peculiar brand of justice. Can't we get him transferred to an open prison? <sighs> He requested Rule 43 for his own protection. Therefore, by official definition, being on 43, he is protected. But not from himself. Yes. Makes me so bloody angry. He was making such progress. I know. And among all the waste, he was one bit of hope that we could achieve something, however small. And I spend my whole bloody life welcoming back the failures who can't cope with life on the outside. I thought Arthur was going to be one of the few exceptions. Hello, Arthur. How are you? You're five minutes late. Screw's been given your an earful. Uh, now, you know I don't discuss clients' problems with screws. I was just having a word with your probation officer. <sighs> He's all right. But there's nothing he can do. <sighs> Somebody's got to make him believe it didn't grass. I know you didn't. How can they believe it in me? You know me form. I would never do a thing like that. I mean, I'm one of them. I always have been. I even did jobs with some of them. We was the 
ruling elites in here. You've got to do something about yourself, Arthur. Oh, you don't understand. I do. I, I, I do. Look, I've been through it. I, I know. When my marriage broke up, my, my friends wouldn't speak to me. My, my respectable... You know? Friend. What do you know? What do you call me a fool? What do you think you can give me? Huh? You can give me nothing. You can only take. Get yourself nicked and spend a year in here, then you might be able to understand. You go to a... A Chinese takeaway and you buy a meal, Jesus Christ. I mean, what experience would that ever give you about China? I'm sorry, Sylvia. I shouldn't talk like that. I don't mean it. Oh, we, we've got to do something, Arthur. <laughs> I've been thinking of this. Parkinson, is it? Well, I'm not going to the special security wing, I'll tell you that for a start. You'll go where you put. Oh, come on, give us a break. Look, where am I going? You'll be in the main prison. I did two years there. It's a tough place. We pull a strike. What way? When the bell goes for the end of association, we don't move. They put all the plugs in the TVs. That don't matter. We just sit tight. Nobody moves. Okay, I'll tell my lot. What's with him then? <laughs> He's got all these B's and Q's, he? <laughs> all I am asking is that I am treated the same as every other lifer. There are guys in here that have done worse crimes than me. They are not Category A. This book contains details of every move I've made since I've been in Nick. You won't find one case of me breaking the rules. So why am I on Category A? You are on Category A because you are the subject of a minimum recommended sentence. That recommendation stands and will continue to stand. The Home Office is not prepared to overturn it. Who signed that letter? Who signed it is immaterial. You are Category A and you are not eligible for parole. I don't accept that. You've no option. And whilst you're here, it's been brought to my attention that you're not being very clever about the company you're keeping. I'm a Category A prisoner, sir. I am only allowed to talk and mix with other Category A men. By definition, we're a bad lot, sir. Look to yourself, Ackland. Wheel him out. On your way, Ackland. Are you going to keep on trying then, Ackland? Well, I'm not going to sit back on my arse and let it all happen to me. I can tell you that for a start. Yeah, hang on, man. 25. Yeah, sure, yeah. Make it a quickie. You know how long it took me to get an answer? 19 bloody months. Take it easy now, Ackland. And that Pratt says I've got to accept the fact that I've got to do 15 years. Well, I'm going to put in an application every chance I get. Come on, move it.
Anytime you like. I suppose you'll get a bit bored of all this, then, Am I? Well, do yourself a favour. I'm going to have a lay down. How comes he gets let off? Well, life has got much more to lose. Hill, one half sick. Right. Secretary was questioned about the continuing unrest in our prisons. The riot in Parkhurst is the latest in a long line of disturbances since the summer. Prisoners continue to strip the roof of the main wing and the damage is estimated at over a million pounds. October 24th. This is where I live, and there's a family squabble going on. I don't want no part of it. The kids are smashing up the happy home, and the parents will smash up the kids. What's new? Do people outside ever think what goes on in places like this? They don't give a monkeys because they can never imagine themselves inside. I'm out of it. I'll survive. Closed up, banged up, no feelings, no emotions, shown nothing, walk around in an iron box inside an iron cage. I want to feel something for someone, but I daren't. You touch me, I'll kick your head in. Such is the process of rehabilitation. Nobody out there will ever understand what the violence is about, so how can they change it? Meanwhile, let the old machinery croak on, degrade, depersonalize, crush and destroy. solitary confinement. That's what, that's what Rule 43 is. Wasn't there anything you could do for him? Oh, yes. I telephoned the chairman of NACRO, and he was duly seen by a prison doctor and pronounced fit, which he was palpably not. In your article, which you wrote for the Amicus newsletter, and which you called A Life in Vain, you clearly point the finger at the system. I do. And the Home Office must take full responsibility. Why must it be so inflexible? Arthur himself used to say that prisons must not simply be human warehouses. Now, I'd like to ask this. 
if his category had been changed and he'd been moved to a prison where the jungle law might not have followed him, would society really have been offended? And has it been, in your opinion, a life in vain? Why don't you ask the Home Office? Thank you, Sylvia Barker. If you'd like to know any more about the work of... Prepare for the flood. Mm -hmm. It's our relationship with the Home Office that worries me. She behaved correctly. She notified you they'd requested an interview. She simply did not make it clear that she was speaking as a private individual, not as our official spokesman. What can we do? Nothing. She's a good associate. She does her work well. She's a good addition to the executive committee. But there are times when I could strangle her. If we're not careful, she'll be running this place before long. I'm going on strike. Don't be stupid, Ackland. This is Gartree, not bloody Parkhurst. You do as you're told here. I'm electing to go on Rule 43. I've had enough. He wants to go down the block. Has he now? All right, Ackland. Give it a bit of thought. Now, what is the point of causing trouble? Because it'll only mean trouble for you. You see, no one even knows you're here yet. You are in limbo, as it were. Now, do as you're told and go on normal location. It's getting late. Some of us would like to go home. Let's have no aggro. Put in a request to see the old man tomorrow. All right, get the bugger over there. Hello, punishment block. Prisoner on his way to you. This him? Yep. Right. Follow me. Now then, Acklin, what's all this about? Why do you want to go on 43? This is a punishment block. You'll be much more comfortable on normal location.
You're taking a bit of a risk, aren't you? All along with a Category A man, no protection. We all have our idiosyncrasies. Well, come on, explain. Well, the Home Office are insisting on keeping me on Category A, right, because I might escape. Now, if I stay on Rule 43, there's no possibility of that, is there? It's unlikely. I mean, I'll be banged up here 23 hours a day, won't I? No need to have two screws following me around wherever I go. No need to keep the light on all night. No need to record every move I make in the book, because I will be the most secure Category A man in the whole bloody system. I'll also be a lot healthier. You're doing this for the sake of your health? Have you ever tried to have a ship with two screws outside the door? I was constipated for months at once, was you're going to live in here, in solitary, all for the sake of your bowel movements. I had a look at your record this morning. Frankly, I don't know why you're on the A-list. I've written to the Home Office for clarification. Yeah? No well, good luck. If you're removed from the list, will you go on normal location? No. It's the business of the judge's recommendation, isn't it? When I was sentenced, the Parole Act wasn't in force. Now, under the Act, after seven years, I've got to be reviewed, and at regular intervals after that. But because of the recommendation, the Parole Board won't even look at my case properly until I've done the 15 years. Catch-22. I don't think that's right, do you? Behaving like this won't get you anywhere. Well, I've tried everything else. A net sentence of 15 years, including full remission, is the equivalent of a sentence of 22 and a half years. The Moors murderers, the Birmingham bombers, they weren't even the subject of a recommendation. What makes me worse than them? Why can't I be considered as I am today, not what I was 10 years ago? The only question is, am I fit to rejoin society? But you can't even ask that question because of the recommendation. Well, thank you for the explanation. But I'm bound to tell you that you have no reason to be on Rule 43. Sometimes Connor's logic completely defeats me. seen his solicitor's submission. Mm. It's well argued, but frankly, I don't see how we can act on it. Our hands are rather tied. Yeah. Yes, it'd be raising Ackland's hopes unfair. He'd only be knocked back. Absolutely. Refusal of parole at this stage could be very damaging for him. No more than his present situation. There is the risk factor, too, you know. Mm. Anyway, it's probably a subject for the Joint Committee. I propose we wait till we receive the F-75. Turn it off, turn it off. What is it? I've got a headache. It's really bad. Hold on. Get you some aspirin from the office. Wearing your lioness blanket. How are you? Don't you think it's time you give all this up? 
Governor sent you out here to tell me that, did he? Oh, come on. I marked you down for more intelligence. Being in Rule 43 will bring you down. It always does. Now, bring them down first, mate. I'm an awkward statistic, as far as they're concerned. You're a damn fool, and I'm not going to waste any more breath arguing with you. Alan, have you thought any more about that other matter? Look, Ian, I get plenty of visitors. What do I need with a stranger, eh? What's a bloody voluntary associate, anyway? They're just ordinary folk. Well, nothing official. They do good work. Oh, don't give me all that shit. You need a, a fresh perspective. A new mind. What are you on about? You've got so many particular in mind, haven't you? It could be. Third? Maybe. Yeah, what's she like? Well, she's not too bad. What do you say? No, I don't know, mate. Alan, you're depressed. Admit it. You need something to, to bring you out of yourself. Only one thing did me any good. Oh, yeah. But in the meantime, you've got to survive. She's bright, cheerful, intelligent. She got big tits. Dear Alan, it's always difficult writing to an unseen face, but here goes. I'm a divorced woman of a certain age with two children. Lovely children, if I may say so. We're going away on our annual camping holiday to Dorset at the end of the week in our new car. My friend Jenny is coming with us. Jenny is a writer of some renown, as they say in Hampstead. Adam wants equipment for below the water. Dear Sylvia, the water. you seem to have overcome your difficulty of writing to an unseen face very well indeed. Your letter brought normality into this most abnormal of all places. It reminded me that there is normal life somewhere. It may seem strange to you, but already I have a definite image of you. An image of openness and truthfulness and honesty. I like that. And I like the sound of your kids, too. It's been my experience that when people write to prisoners, they're seldom normal or natural letters. Yours most definitely is. I spent some time in Dorset when I was a young teenager. Not in the most perfect of circumstances. But you've made me remember that time with some pleasure. can be interpreted as weakness and be exploited. But it's very dangerous to strangle one's emotions, as I know to my cost. From childhood on and right through my marriage, I suppressed my real emotions and feelings. Please believe me, I do understand. Your sense of isolation, of separateness within your family, within your marriage. Everything you describe, I might have written to you but I worry. I'm a fairly ordinary, muddled, confused human being. More muddled than most, sometimes. Do not invest me with any special powers of understanding or competence. I'm trying hard, very hard, to keep the stopper in the bottle. But you've found a way through my defences. And I'm glad. I'm very glad you have. Writing to you, I can say so much. And as each day passes, I have more and more I want to say. I have to insert a warning here. I feel we're rushing things a bit. You are writing daily letters now, which is slightly forcing the pace. I understand what you're saying, but I don't agree we're with it. We're going too fast. But don't you realize what a special communication we have? One must beware of making fantasy figures. I'm real, and you are real to me. I know only truth can exist between people like us. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel in the most extraordinary way that I've become attached to this man, Alan Ackland. And I've never even met him. We've had enough letters. Like Abelard and Eloise. I've been totally indiscreet, which isn't at all like me. Oh, well, maybe it is like me. I mean, I, I've told him all about my breakdown. Now, why should I do that on paper to a complete stranger? I think it's marvellous. Why are you so worried? Well, because for someone in his situation, it would be the easiest thing in the world to develop fantasies about our relationship. 
We offer friendship and friendship only. If you mean sexual fantasies, you can't stop him having those. If I told them at Amicus the kind of letters I've been writing, there'd be an uproar. I'm an experienced VA. This has never happened to me before. Good therapy for you. It's not supposed to be therapy for me. And what do I say when I meet him? Hi, I'm the nutter who's been writing you all those letters. Send your mother instead. <laughs> Visit in time, Ackland. Hold on, hold on. Why do you wear dark glasses? That's the light. That's my eyes. Take them off. <laughs> Thank you. discovered a few cracks in my own reflection. Yeah, but you survived, I. Well, I learned to. Had to. I understand that, all right. You have quite a trick, Alan Ackland. What's that? Well, you sit there like a wise old guru and I tell you everything. No, it's not a trick. Isn't it? No, most people talk through sort of layers of armour. Between us, it's different. 
Why? I don't know. It's been like that from the first letters, haven't it? They've been good letters. Oh, they've been much more than that. You're a strange man. Visiting time's over. Um, You'll come back soon. I can't. I can't come back for a month. Well, come when you can. Yes. The second part of this story can be seen next Sunday evening at 10.15. There's an article by the novelist Beryl Bainbridge on the background to this story in the forthcoming edition of The Listener magazine, published on Thursday. This Tuesday, four days in July, a new film by Mike Lee centering on events around the 12th of July holiday in Belfast. And on two... Come using my new work, Brent. Aye, oh, and the others are restless, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Two couples and two communities in Four Days in July. A new film from Mike Lee this Tuesday at 9.25 on BBC One. 
Now, just before we close, a brief look at our lineup of programmes here on the BBC Two for tomorrow evening. At 7.30, Sir Stanley Matthews, 70 this week, provides our great sporting moment as we relive his testimonial match of 1965. Sarah Brown is in the vegetarian kitchen at 7.45, and at 10 past 8, Bob Monkhouse plays host to Michael Barrymore, Peter Cook and Bill Mayer. Marty Kane's Hillary at 9 o'clock, and at 9.30, Horizon reports on a mission to prevent the tragic death in East Africa of millions of children through infant gastroenteritis. Richard Seabrook recalls his shearing season in his year as a freelance sheep farmer in Suffolk at 10.20, news nights at 10.50, followed at 11.35 by Telejournal. That's tomorrow evening here on BBC Two. Over on BBC One now, there's international snooker. But from all of us here on Two, it just remains for me, David Allen, to thank you for joining us and to wish you a very good night. Good night.